This is Ray's Hobbit World of Magnetism 2. I made a Ray's Hobbit World of Magnetism 1. I would suggest you go back and watch that. It was a pendulum design. I'm going to do a better testing. In number one, I used a pendulum to test and I used a hand force to do my testing measurements. This suggested that may not be accurate. I agreed. So I set this up and we're going to see if we can do this a little bit better with uh, better measurements. So I set my pendulum on a horizontal design and that gives me more I can work with instead of having a floating pendulum going back and forth like that. So this is my pendulum that's considered my input. Back here is my output. It's a monopole. I have uh, seven and a half, one eighth by one half button magnets. They're Neo. Has a masonry nail coming out three inches. There is a force field here, but according to right angle magnetics, which I covered in number one, we should be able to come in and out of this gate without any force. No pullback and no resistance coming in. So, I have this set up uh, fairly, uh, I, a good note here for construction. Uh, it's okay to have a little bit of drag. I used the motor because it already has an axis on it. Also, I unweighted this unbalanced so there would be even more drag. The reason is I'm looking for comparison, input to output. If you get something so balanced, pretty soon the magnetic field of the earth will start moving it. I've had magnets in the other room affecting them when I had them too balanced. So just a note for construction purposes. Okay, so the way I'm going to test this, this is my input, this is my output. My pet projects are over unity effects. If I can have a low powered input, comparatively a higher powered output, I consider that over unity effects. So going back to right angle magnetics, uh, you can see this turns pretty easily. We'll be testing that how easily. And you can even tell that even just to the side of the force field here, there is no pull, push, and also here. Also a note of interest is this movement up and down, which is my output, has no effect with this. Similar to the Milkovic pendulum, they're almost separate systems. So the one does not interfere in that way. Okay, let's go ahead and begin some weight testing. This is my one washer. One washer does not weigh much. I have it hooked on to my pendulum and what I want to do is see if this force of one let's hook this on of one washer is enough to pull that through and fire my output gate. I have a little wheel here, it's from my, uh, a door wheel that uh, you slide your doors on and off. It has very low friction, works real well. So go ahead and bring it back. So this one washer is enough to uh, fire, come through and fire my output. Now my reasoning is if I can lift one washer with one washer uh, input, then that would be a balance. That would be a hundred percent efficiency. So, let's see. Okay, it's holding up there. Let's go ahead and put two on there. We're in the firing position right now. Okay, let's see if this will still drag through two. This is 
two times over unity according to my my thinking. So we'll come up here and see if this one washer will bring it through the gate and fire it. Let me just make this a little bit more clear for you. I balanced this with a little bit of clay so it would fire better. And Okay, let's try that again. See if it's going to fire. Come through without any one washer firing it. And it did. The uh, field of this strength is, is uh, so strong and this is so balanced that uh, it's pretty easy for it to go up in the air at this point. Okay. It comes through. Okay, let's go ahead and put three. This is my output. We're having this as a consistent weight. The input is set. This is my control, my reference. It's one washer. My output is the gain. Okay. Let's go ahead and see if that'll fire and whether this one washer will bring it through and fire it. It does. So there's very, very, very small drag in a right angled magnetic setup. Okay. Let's go ahead and put our four, four washers. Okay. I want it to be a surprise for you, so I held that down. <laughs> Here we go with that one washer. It does. There's four times over unity according to my thinking and research. Backs that up. Okay. Let's see if we can do five. We have five washers on the output, but we're still having our control as one washer amount of force. We're still able, it's just right on the limit. Uh, this is unbalanced to the heavy side, so I'm still going to count that because that wasn't, that clay wasn't so heavy, would, would fire that whole way up. But it does lift it off. So we're having five to one amount of increase. Okay? This is what my theory is, what I think is going on. You can see where uh, I have this as a south north, south north. So as you come down through parallel to my base magnet or the input magnet, you can see it changing from north to south. In Ray's Hobbit World of Magnetism 1, I go into more of a breakdown about this neutral zone. This is an expanded neutral zone that I opened up. And you can refer back to number 1. Ray's Hobbit World of Magnetism 2. The monopole sees the Hobbit world an unstable transition zone. Within the Hobbit world, these two forces, north and south, north and south, become switched. It is really only one force, similar to a penny. It's only one penny, but it gets turned around in this Hobbit zone. This is the compass reading changing with position. Actually, if you remember, we were, what, due, <laughs> due east or something like that when we were down, down in there. We'll say uh, east, right in the middle. And that's very unusual to me. I always wondered what these neutral zones were doing. 
But anyhow. Ray's Hobbit World of Magnetism 2. Movement of the monopole through this Hobbit world. This is my monopole, my output. These two forces, looking at each other, want to align. That's what that's supposed to say. They want to line up. So what they're trying to do, they want to align, but they can't due to the changing transition of forces. Before they can align up to each other or become balanced, we get off and on the road. That's this portion here. The gate, I'm talking about getting on and off the road, is my magnetic gate, which fires both ways, which is uh, really putting twice the efficiency to it. We use only a certain portion of this road. Right angle magnetics allow us to get on and off without pain. And that's what this gate was. I was testing right in here. When I'm saying I put a penny's worth of energy in and getting five cents out, it sounds like I'm getting something from nothing. But I never really explained that. I am not breaking the law of conversation. From A to D, this system as a whole is balanced. So there is no breaking of any law at all. And we won't, even as we get into this. But, when we're in this transition zone, the Hobbit world, then there is a force exerted when you put a monopole into this field here. We'll find a moving force parallel to the base magnet and it wants to bring this along. This is what I was saying about the two. This is aligned here, the forces. Here they are aligned. In here they're trying to get aligned. So the, ma the uh, monopole force sees this other force. It's trying to line up with it, but as you saw in the compass, as the monopole comes along, it's actually seeing different uh, readings on the compass. So this combination of resultant forces produce a parallel force going that way. So I'm able to come in for little or no pay, access the road, and then I jump on the road and I use this force. Before they come to alignment again, which would stop the whole process, I can freely get off again. So I'm not breaking the law of compensation, servation, but I'm only using a portion of this road, getting on and off when I want to. So I hope that explains a little bit. I am not breaking the law of compensation, uh, conservation, but only using a part of it where the forces uh, are in favor of each other, where they're trying to catch up but never do, but before they do, <laughs> which they will at both ends, then I get off the road. Okay. Anyhow, this is, uh, this is it. It tests out about five to one. Uh, if you want to construct these things, uh, you can make a lot stronger ones. Uh, this is scalable, but a note is that you don't have to get this perfectly without any uh, drag. Let's take this off here. You know, if you have some drag in here, that's great because what happens is your output force grows faster than your input resistances and your pullbacks. So I got up to eight just with a little bit of drag. I didn't test it too well, but I had eight washers on there and it's working well. I just kind of pushed them together a little bit and I know it's a little bit of drag. But uh, so anyhow, this is Ray's Hobbit World of Magnetism 2 testing. Ray's Hobbit World of Magnetism 1 where I had a pendulum which was hand tested 
with its force. This is a much better comparison. I think I wind it up with five or six there on the uh, hand testing, which I was pretty uh, uh, happy with myself that uh, I was fairly accurate with that uh, number one. So anyhow, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this. This may be open up. Uh, we have a repeatable gate, as I pointed out in number one, which is the holy grail for me. Uh, never, never had one of those before. And I'm just really excited about why the Hobbit world. Well, I, I'm just so excited about it. I think, well, what in the world am I going to call this thing? I could not find anything descriptive enough, because here you're entering into a force field, with no pay. You get in free. And you use the force of the magnets, and that just seemed unbelievable to me. So, uh, forgive me, I'm a little starstruck. So, anyhow, hope you enjoyed this. I uh, hope you can make a few of these. You can always improve on things. These, this is the first one I made of this. Number one was the first one I made of the pendulum. There's always people out there have better ideas. Okay, go for it. Catch you later.